Good morning, everyone. And I apologize, my camera seems a little weird this morning, but hopefully you are all doing well. Thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. Uh, we'll go through uh, the the call itself, uh, some of the particulars, the details. It's a lot of the information that's already out there, but we'll give some more depth to it. And of course, if you have any questions, um, we will we'll get to hopefully get to all your questions. And if not, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we'll have information on that as well. So go ahead and start sharing my screen, I hope. Okay. You look good, Sophia? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Everybody, this is also my colleague, Sophia Alvarez, who's our program associate at uh, the Democracy Center. So we are here today to talk about the Irene Yamamoto Arts Writers Fellowship. Uh, this is the second year for the fellowship, and we are so excited. Last year we had, um, I think it was over 150 applications. Um, so the the call itself is very, very competitive. A little bit about the, the National Center for the Preservation of Democracy. We recently relaunched um, and have a little bit of a name change to honor Daniel, Senator Daniel K. Inouye, the late senator from Hawaii, who was a major force in uh, developing the, the museum itself and, and setting the course for the Democracy Center. Uh, this, as I said, is the second year for the Irene Yamamoto Arts Writers Fellowship. Um, beginning this year, there will be uh, a focus on, um, I shouldn't say a different, uh, it will be a different artistic discipline each year. So last year, you as arts writers and critics could write about, if you're writing about any type of, of discipline, it was eligible. And this year, it's going to be restricted to, um, to those who critically write about theater, dance, or performance art. And we'll talk a little bit about those categories in just a few minutes. Um, and it will award two grants for $5,000. The grants are unrestricted, so you're welcome to do with it whatever you want. We simply would just love to know at the end of the grant period uh, what you did with it and help us uh, continue to support this effort by telling more people about it each year. Um, a little bit about Irene, she was um, one of the people who was born in Los Angeles, and then in 1942, her and her family were incarcerated at the Gila River concentration camp in Arizona. And when she came back to LA, she uh, became a student at UCLA and had a long career as a production artist and uh, worked for several design and advertising agencies. And she um, was just this really, really wonderful, caring person in our community. And the gift was made from Sharon Mazota, her, her niece, uh, as a way of honoring uh, Irene's legacy. This project is also supported by an organization called Critical Minded, uh, which is an initiative to invest in cultural critics of color that was co-funded co by the Nathan Cummings Foundation and the Ford Foundation. <clears throat> so the submission dates uh, for the, the, the application uh, the portal is currently open, uh, so you can apply now through March 17th. Uh, the portal uh, has closes, we say it closes on March 17th, but please be mindful of where you are applying from uh, because the, 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 um, the system runs actually on Mountain Time. That's where CAFE is located. And so the application closes on March 17th at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. So if you are in the Pacific time zone, that means it closes at 10.59 p.m. on the 17th. And if you're in Central and Eastern, I should have, sorry, I made a little mistake there. Um, if you're in the Central time zone or Eastern time zone, it closes at 12.59 a.m. and 1.59 a.m. respectively on the 18th. Uh, so please, what I always say to people in any of these types of applications is please don't wait to the last minute. Um, you never know what kind of technology issues you may run into. Things don't upload at the last minute. You lose your internet connection. Uh, anything can happen. So please, please try to get your application in as early as possible. Um, and if you are waiting to the last minute, and I'm guilty of that, um, maybe not the very, very last minute to submit. Um, once the portal closes, uh, we do some uh, quick 
work on organizing all of the applications and then we will convene the first group of reviewers who will look at um, the applications in a very specific way. And that review will take probably about three to four weeks. And then we will have um, a process where we look at the scores, the, the, the applications that were scored the highest, and we will do a whole nother round of, of looking into that um, and looking into those applications with a, um, a little bit more critical eye. And the panel that's con convened will come up with the final two awardees. And we expect that to be sometime in mid-May with us being able to announce or, or to contact the, the fellows awardees probably in the beginning of June and then make the formal announcement by the middle of June. Um, and so the fellowship period will be from uh, December or from June to December of this year. Um, eligibility requirements. Um, you must reside in or be a, a citizen of the US at the time of your application. Um, if you are uh, a student that is visiting from another country, you are eligible as long as you are participating here and living here at that time. Um, you must be 18 years of age or older. Um, you must identify as a member of a community with ancestry in one of the original peoples of Africa, Asia, the Americas, Oceania, or Pacific Islands. Um, you should have less than two years of publication experience. Um, and this can include, this may include blogs or self-publishing. Um, two years of publication experience. Um, there is, you know, it can be left up to interpretation. If you're, <clears throat> if you have significant years of, of publishing experience, um, this app, this particular opportunity may not be a fit for you. Uh, the intention is to really um, reach those emerging writers who have um, or just embarking on their career and could use that extra support in terms of you know finances, being able to cover some expenses while looking into uh, developing their career. Um, and you should also have a demonstrated commitment to writing about theater, dance, and performance art. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more again about the, the specifics of, of that um, and what you should be submitting in terms of your application. Uh, um, okay, so for the application process, on the application, you'll be asked some very sort of basic identifying um, uh, demographic information so we know who you are. Um, you are asked to submit a cover letter, and all of your attachment and attachments should be either in Word or PDF form. Um, and the cover letter is really your opportunity to kind of introduce yourselves to the panelists, um, talk about your work and why you are applying for this fellowship and how um, how you would see spending that money uh, over the course of that six months. Um, and it should be about a thousand words or less. Um, we ask that you submit a resume or, or a CV that includes all of your re relevant published works. Um, if you have um, a short biography, we ask you to submit that, um, which just talks, and this is a little bit different than the cover letter. This is more um, what you would present as uh, yourself in terms of if you were, um, when you win the award, how we would describe you. Um, and so it's a little bit different than the, the cover letter. It's a lot more oriented to talking about who you are as an artist. Um, and then any writing samples, um, anything else that you would like the panel to know about um, your application, about your circumstances, um, and that will be a separate question. And then you're asked to submit writing samples, obviously, since this is a fellowship for critical writers. Um, and so a little bit about the writing samples. They should fall into one of the three categories that are being, uh, that are part of the work this year. So, um, and those are theater, dance, and performance art. And so for theater, uh, the work of the theater or the, the actual artistic work that you are writing about um, should be that of a play, a musical, an opera that takes place in front of a live audience. Um, the second one is dance. Um, and again, this is the work that you're reviewing. The work that you're reviewing should be a critical review of 
performance of rhythmic or choreographed music, usually set to music, and that takes place <clears throat> in front of a live audience. <clears throat> if there, um, you know, in the past couple of years, obviously, with uh, the pandemic, um, a lot of things have been online. Um, if you have written about that, um, you're more than welcome to submit that. Uh, but we do, uh, I think that the, the stronger pieces of criticism would be those that were actually performed live. Um, and then performance art, you know, can capture a lot of different um, aspects of art. So it should be, as described here, a timed-based presentation that takes place in front of an audience. Um, and we recognize that the, that performance art is can be hybrid. It can be very experimental. And so there is some kind of, of, of uh, latitude that we're giving in terms of what that work might look like that you are writing about. Um, but for the purposes of, of this award, it should not just include live performances of popular classical music, um, stand up or improvisational comedy, and it shouldn't be um, pre recorded film or video screens that are not incorporated into other into some other type of performance event. Um, if you have questions about that, um, we will um, be sure to save them and we will get to them at the end of the, the, the presentation and we'll try and help you figure that out for yourself. Um, in terms of submitting the samples, the writing samples, um, you may submit up to three samples. So all the samples, you know, there are these three categories of dance, performance art, and and, mu and music. Um, they can all be from the same category. You can write, if you're a writer who writes about a variety of performing arts, they can be from multiple categories. Um, but all the works must be from these three categories. So samples of reviews of criticism such of like visual art, like a museum exhibition or a gallery show are not really the type of thing that you want to be submitting for this um, exhibition and they won't actually be read by the panel. Um, so just be mindful of that, that if your work encompasses a variety of, of types of disciplines, um, the things that you want to submit for this, for this um, award and in this application process are from those three categories. Um, now you can submit up to three samples. And again, the sample should be Word or PDF. Um, and whether you're submitting one sample, two samples, or three, the total number of words submitted across all of the works should not exceed 3,000. So we had some people last year who um, were a bit confused and submitted uh, three samples of 3,000 words each. Um, that, um, is not acceptable for, for this application. Um, however, you want to break them up in terms of one, if you're submitting three, it could be 500 from one, uh, 750 from another one, and then is that um, 1500 for the third one? So, or somewhere close to that, if I'm not doing my math correctly. Um, so, again, you can submit as many samples as you want, up to three. But all of the, the works submitted, whether it's one or three or two, should not exceed 3,000 words in total for all of the submissions. Not each submission, all of the submissions. Um, we ask that you also make a notation uh, either on, um, on the PDF or in the Word document that shows where they were, they were published. Um, and so, uh, but we don't want simply to have a URL, uh, you know, submitted on a piece of paper or a link to a website. Um, you actually have to submit the actual work. And if it is on a website and you print out a PDF of it, that's fine. Uh, but just make sure that we do know where that was coming from. Um, and then some people had had talked about interviews, um, samples that are merely interviews where you've asked a question. And an artist has responded, and then you've asked another question, and they've responded. Um, those are just not competitive. Um, if you've done interviews, but they have 
um, there's more to just the interview. The interview is a piece of a larger piece of criticism, um, then that's acceptable. It just can't be a simple interview on its own. Um, so the applications are only accepted on our CAFE system. Uh, this is the, the link if you haven't already explored it. Um, it is on the information on our website. Um, and I think Sophia is going to be dropping some of these links into the, the chat as well. Um, you can create a new account in CAFE if you don't have one or you just log into your existing account. We do ask that you, if you're having technical issues with the system, either you're having trouble logging in or you're having trouble uploading things or the system isn't saving things correctly, that you contact CAFE directly and their help support because there's there's really nothing we can do. Um, if you're having issues contacting them, then of course, please reach out to us um, and we'll see if we can you know, get some help for, for you from them. Um, but any technical questions with them, we really, it's their system, it runs on their platform, um, and they're the ones who, who are able to best help you. Um, and then, um, so now we have time for questions. Um, so, Sophia? As of now, I don't see any questions in our question uh, feature, but... If anyone has any questions, I'll look to the chat. You're also welcome to raise your hand. Um, there's also the Q&A function. And this is going to be, we're obviously recording this, and it will be up um, on our YouTube page and a link from uh, the, the call page on our website as well. Oh, we have one. Okay. okay, we have a question from Tia. Is an essay that compares the work of two theater artists eligible? I would say yes, that it is. Um, as long as it is, um, as long as you feel that that's one of your strongest works, um, then that um, it's not discount. It, it wouldn't be ineligible because of, of what you're saying here. Um, but if it is a critical piece and it has been published somewhere, uh, then yes. Great. Thank you, Tia. We have another question. Um, can you talk about ways folks have used funding in the past? We actually just concluded uh, their, we've only done this once before, and we've only conclu concluded their grant period. Um, theirs ran a little bit later, and so we're waiting to hear back from them on um, on what they did with their money, but from what I, from what I understand, previous um, from previous conversations with them, some of them were just using it for their own expenses um, as a writer, um, looking to expand their careers. Obviously, this money can come in very handy for this. Uh, people have used things like this in the past for um, uh, not only living expenses but artistic expenses. Uh, educational expenses, uh, applying for various other fellowships that do have a fee that we actually don't charge. And um, so the next question talks about, are there any ineligible expenses? And the answer is no. And so if that helps answer the first question as well, um, we don't ask, you know, we, there's nothing formal that we just kind of want to know what you're doing with it, but we don't really do anything with that information. Um, it's totally an unrestricted grant, so you're able to do with it whatever you want. Great. We have another question. Um, does it matter if I have been, or if I've seen the theatrical work live, or can it be analyzed from a more literal, literary point of view by just looking at the play? Uh, you mean in turn, if you've just read the play? Um, I think that's what they were asking instead of actually seeing it. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. Um, if you're doing it, it's more of a um, um, literary examination. Um, I think the, I think the strongest, um, the the strongest pieces that would um, 
be considered or have the most impact on the review panel um, probably are ones that were took into account what the actual theatrical production looked like, not just what it looked on, like on paper. Um, so I think a stronger application would be one of actually seeing the theatrical work. Okay. And a word about the panelists, um, we will have a, a, a call that with our partners to find uh, professionals in the industry who are doing this type of writing, um, who will be the ones that will serve on the panel. Um, neither Sophia nor myself nor the funders have any um, say into um, who the, the final selected uh, fellows are. It all comes from this third party impartial body of, of reviewers. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, we'll leave this open for just a few more minutes. Um, if anybody does have a question that they, they want to ask, um, but otherwise, oh, unless you said. There you go. Um, I think I, I and I'm making this comment as somebody who didn't select them, but what I felt um, for that section, and of course it was a very different type of, it wasn't very different, but it was a different, obviously it was a call for all types of critical arts writing, not just for performing arts. Um, and so what stood out, I think, were the, the passion that the the fellows brought to their work, um, their dedication to wanting to write about um, the work, um, coming particularly from a cultural standpoint. Um, who, um, you know, this is a, a fellowship specifically for writers of color. Um, and the idea is to help build the bench strength of critics of color who can review works um, from disparate communities um, with some cultural competency. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that stood out for the, the writers that were selected was that it wasn't just that they were writing, but they brought that perspective as a person of color to their writing. So Janum um, is working, uh, Janum has, if you don't know the museum, um, it's located here in Los Angeles and it sits in a very um, specific place in the Little Tokyo community. Um, it was originally housed in what was the first Buddhist temple in Los Angeles while the main museum was being built. Um, and it is in that spot, that very location <clears throat> that uh, Japanese Americans, there are some 37,000 in 1942 were ordered to report uh, before being taken to Santa Anita Racetrack, where they were housed in, in horse stalls while they were processed and then taken to one of 75 in, uh, American concentration camps throughout the country, um, such as Gila River, where um, Irene was, was housed and incarcerated during those years. And so the museum has always had an eye, not just to celebrating Japanese American culture, but also to, um, um, to, to look at that moment in our here country's history um, to make sure that it never, never happens again. And so, and so the, the museum itself has this very strong bent towards social justice. And about 20 years ago, uh, through the work of some of our, our, our leaders in the community who are also leaders in government, the idea for the Democracy Center, an actual physical location, uh, that was was funded and was able to be built on the Janum campus. And over the past few years, we've had, you know, we've seen these calls for, um, we've seen democracy kind of under attack. And so the National Center for Preservation of Democracy really looks to be able to extend the work that Janum does and to really uplift conversations around democracy. And one of the conversations that continually comes up is representation and, and how important representation is in a multicultural democracy. 
And so often the cultures that have come here from other places than Europe are often discounted, are often not felt that they're like true art forms or they're not this Western ideal. But in America, it shouldn't necessarily be a Western. It is a, a, a truly unique canon of art that comes from around the world. But what we find is that in so many cases, um, when there is culturally specific art or culturally specific performances, um, if there is somebody who is, does not have that understanding of that culture to begin with, is the one writing the reviews or the critiques, um, it can have a very negative impact. Um, and, it, and, and that has an impact on us being able to continue to push for more representation. And so that's really sort of the basis for the work that Critical Minded is doing um, at a much higher level um, than this, this kind of one little small role that we're playing to kind of help that. But that's why we really, really, you know, uh, in all of our programming, uh, this fits so well into what we're doing. Thank you for that question. Um, there is no cost for applying. Um, it is a free application. You are not um, um, required to submit any letters of reference or recommendation. If you're on your CV, you want to list people, um, you, you could do that. But um, for the most part, nobody would be checking those until maybe you know the very last round of, of, of um, review. Um, so it, I, we don't want to put people to more work than they, they need to do for this application. And as I said, we will, we will keep this open for a few more minutes. Um, if there are people that, uh, or questions that come to you, um, we'll, we're here to answer them. Um, of course, you're more than welcome to continually check back on our website um, for additional information. And you're more than welcome to reach out to us directly. Um, yes, you're more than welcome to reapply if you applied last year. Um, if you have questions, you can email us at democracycenter at janum.org, and we'll be happy to answer questions offline there as well. And all that information too is on our on the website um, on how to contact us. I see some people are dropping off. So um, if there aren't any other pressing questions, if you're still typing one out, maybe just raise your hand so we know you have a question. Um, otherwise, we will um, end this call. And as I said, we'll also have the, this is being recorded, so we'll have the video up and um, you're more than welcome to refer back to it as well. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Again, if there's one thing I, I recommend, don't wait till the last minute to, to submit. Um, and we're always here to answer any questions you have as you're going through this process. Okay. Thank you so much. And you have a really, really wonderful day. Thank you.